What's up, guys? This is going to be a new time-lapse tutorial, episode one, that I'm going to be doing, where I show you guys what I've done in Unreal Engine, and then I quickly show a time-lapse uh, recap of how to do it. As you can see here, I'm working on a music video for my buddy, and I took some green screen footage of them and placed them directly into this car scene in Unreal Engine. I'm going to be going through the whole process. I spent about three, four hours to do this, counting the rendering. Just hang along for the ride, and I'll walk you through a very quick time lapse tutorial. The first step is going to be obviously production where you film your subject on a green screen and uh, then you go into post-production and you key out your green screen footage like I'm doing here. I use the 3D keyer in Resolve and then once you have a clean key you can export it using an EXR image sequence. I'm doing 4K here. You may want to do 1080 depending on your graphics card but Make sure your frame rate's right and make sure you check the alpha box and then export your EXR image sequence. All right, so once you have your footage keyed out, you can open up your project. I'm using the Unreal Engine uh, Matrix Awaken City Sample Pack. They have some cool blueprints in here that when you render your video and sequencer, you'll have some cars driving and some people walking by. So adds a level of realism. I got this car, it's a Ferrari 2020 Roma model off a of CG Trader, and I use the automotive materials uh, to create the textures and the look of the car. Um, here I am creating an image sequence and adding some lights to the scene. I'll leave a link in the description with a tutorial that explains how to take your green screen footage and put it on a media plate using EXR image sequences. Essentially, after you clean the footage up, you go into Unreal Engine and create a media EXR image sequence, and then create a media player, and then you take a plane, just a flat plane, and then throw that material onto that plane. Then in Sequencer, you can go and create a media track and point it to that uh, material. It's kind of confusing sounding, but once you've done it a few times, it's pretty easy. What I did next was I attached them to the car. So when the car moves, they move along with it. And then I added some lighting to the scene. So when the car moves down the street, it looks like it's going underneath the street lights. Here I am just playing with the camera settings and getting ready for the render. So I used Lumen. I think I did 64 AA anti-aliasing. I set the bloom all the way down to zero. Also the uh, flare, I changed that in the end to have no flare. Uh, the bloom and the flare were causing some weird issues, so got rid of it. One thing to mention in this specific environment, the Matrix Awakens pack, if you were trying to render in Sequencer, there's a weird issue with the positioning of the camera and the positioning of your objects that are in Sequencer moving. You need to make each object a spawnable object. So don't just drag in a camera from the Place Actors menu. If you do, you need to convert it to a spawnable object. Um, and then any items in your scene that are moving need to be spawnable objects as well. So I did the side shot. Now I am doing the front shot. And what I did was, even though they were sitting together and I got both of them at the same time in the same scene, I decided to separate it into two separate ones so I could place them both in the center of the car seat individually. So I keyed out two separate EXR sequences and then I just put them in their chairs. Got the angle right. One other thing I do is I use a color correction region uh, and I attach that 
to the either the planes or to the car. Uh, I typically attach everything to one object. So I attach the planes to the car and I attach the color correction region to the car. And then I added a light in there as well to give them a little inside lighting. And I attach that to the car as well. You attach all these items in sequencer. So when you play it back in sequencer, they all move together. So I am just doing some fine tweaking here. And it looks like I am doing the final render. So I did it three ways. I did kind of a far away front shot. I did a close side shot. And the reason I did it so close on the side is because I merged the car tires with the car, which means I couldn't animate them. And I didn't feel like rebuilding the car out, leaving the tires unmerged, uh, just so I could rotate them. So that side shot you saw at the beginning it was so close because the tires are not actually moving. But it looks good. So I got the front shot far away, I got a side shot, and then I got one more front shot where I'm kind of moving around a little bit more, and that's what you're seeing now. And that's pretty much it. I know I went pretty quick in this, but it is a time-lapse tutorial, so if you would like a more detailed description of each of these steps, leave a comment, and maybe I'll create some lessons on that as well. And as always, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.